The risks of vaccination entail what's there in the vaccine. People might have allergic reactions. People might have local reactions. The whole concept is called reactogenicity. That varies from vaccine to vaccine. What I'm aware of is that the literature out there indicates that there's no side effect from vaccines that documented that occurs any more than 42 days after a given shot. Anything after that is attributable to something else completely. On the other hand, the risk of infection is well described as well over the last year and a half. And we're talking about potentially getting sick. And of course, some people would be sick enough to be hospitalized. Some people would be sick enough to be missing work, missing school. Once you're hospitalized, there's a chance you are sick enough to be uh, admitted to the intensive care unit. And there you're hooked up to a breathing machine, all sorts of monitors. It can be really quite uncomfortable. And then lastly, the risk of severe infection is that people will actually die from infection, especially have a number of risk factors, comorbidities, old age, obesity, uh, heart and lung conditions, diabetes, poorly controlled um, metabolic uh, conditions, and immunosuppression. There are lots of figures, lots of data to indicate this is the risk of vaccination, this is the risk of, of infection, and they don't compare anywhere near to each other. I think the latest example that I'm aware of is um, with one of the vaccines, I believe it's uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine and myocarditis. When I look at the figures for myocarditis, it's true that the primary target is young, um, sort of otherwise healthy men, but the risk of getting myocarditis from COVID-19 is about 1 in 43, whereas the risk of getting myocarditis from the vaccine is 1 in 20,000. If you're actually betting on something where you're trying to reduce your risk of getting a myocarditis, in whether you get vaccinated or not, then, then go with the vaccine. Question about whether there's anything else that can be shared about the, the COVID-19 uh, calls into question the host pathogen relationship. I mean, there's people, we know how people behave, we know how people react, we know how, what people know and how they respond to uh, in emergencies. But what's still not fully known is what's happening with the pathogen, with the virus. It's not done with its bag of tricks. It's still got a long ways to go, a uh, few more cards up its sleeve to be able to come up with more variants, more mutations, other ways of, of spreading, other ways of causing damage and, and perpetuating itself. Viruses are the most fundamental unit of life that can reproduce and spread. And it does so incredibly well. We're always looking for a way to get back to normal. We're always looking for a way to sort of stop this uh, cold in its tracks. What can be said is that vaccination is really uh, the only way, the best way, if not the only way to do so. It's really time for everybody to go ahead and get vaccinated. It's safe, it's effective. It's really the only way out of this current pandemic.